<laughs> I'm with Matthew Gardner at Gardner Economics. Matthew is a consultant to many of the home builders, certainly a, a large number of the lenders and a number of capital pools, not just in Puget Sound, but he's, he's a pretty, uh, pretty well-known commodity in this area as an opinion leader. So what I'm interested in, Matthew, is what are you seeing out there that is giving you some confidence in the market that in fact there there is some reason for us to be investing our time in industry events? I think it's a particularly interesting question. Uh, mainly I think the thing that leads me into saying the market's improving is the fact that there's a lot of equity out there in the market right now that historically has not been here. So you've got a lot of debt, a lot of equity and a lot of builders that historically have not been in the Puget Sound. For some reason or another they're looking at Seattle as a place that they want to be. That, I think, is actually a very interesting leading indicator. I wanted to talk to you about that too, Matthew. What's the deal with all the publics coming here? Is there enough business for all of them? Uh, what's attracting them? Clearly, it's a, it's a beautiful city and it's got good employment and all of that, but how can they all survive or will they? I think it's actually more of a replacement. Historically speaking, we've had 10 or 12 builders who have been the major builders in the marketplace. If I go back 10, 15, 20 years, it's a very high barrier to entry market. Right. The place a lot of national builders wanted to be, they had a hard time getting here. Now there is that opportunity. Is it, does it mean there's going to be too many? That's actually going to be unlikely. What's more than likely to happen is actually it's a replacement. We'll still see 10 or 12 builders. The names are actually just going to be different. Got it. If there are these numbers of, of nationwide builders whose lifeblood is even more than profit is terms, is return on capital, the fact that they may need to bid down the prices, the prices per square foot or whatever it is, but, but to give consumers more choice and more buying power, and that may hurt in the short term, does that in and of itself improve the market though, bring some activity to the market that may in fact help the marginal builders, the people that don't have the market share or, or don't have the horsepower? I think ultimately absolutely it will. As larger builders, and some of them are used to being in a market where the minimum they have to transact is 1500 2,000 units right. in a year. They're not going to do that here quite clearly. And basically no one has other than one very bizarre year in 2006. Right. So I think two things are happening. First of which is they're looking at the market and saying we want to be here. How can we make it work? They're actually changing their own business models to accommodate a smaller market. That means they'll be hiring less people but over a greater geography. So you're likely to have some development companies who have an interest in Seattle and in Portland they're combining the efforts. If they keep lowering okay. their overhead, if they lower their overhead, that's actually going to help their bottom line. And I think additionally as well, there's a lot of people out there that are saying, if, if these guys are here, I want to be here. Will it have a knock-on effect to the smaller builder? And remembering, the average builder in Seattle transacts 25 to 35 homes a year, very little. And a majority of our market is that small builder. Will that help them? I think absolutely, ultimately it will because it's going to be offering choice. Matthew, tell us something about your relationship with the Cameron Group. I've known Scott Cameron uh, for about 14 years now. Uh, his company and I have joined forces on a number of different projects. We've consulted with each other. And upcoming during the course of this year, we've got some very interesting reports that we're putting together and putting out to the marketplace, which I think actually uh, is something, there's a big gap in the market for information. And I think it's something which we're going to be uh, bringing to the market this year. Excellent. What do you think about their contribution not just to your success and some of your other clients, whether it's builder clients, capital pool clients, lender clients, but their impact on the market at large. Well, it's that knowledge skill, it's that skill set that they have. They look very myopically uh, at distressed assets and distressed portfolios. They've become experts on that. I'm a great fan of somebody having a high level of expertise in a very small area. And that I think is something which they've been proven to be able to do over the last couple of years. I'm very excited for their business plan going forward. Excellent. Matthew, tell us about the very first choice you made to purchase your very own first car. First car I had, a black Mini. Uh, in, I think it was a 1976 Mini, which uh, my mother gave me on my 17th birthday, and I rolled after 86 days. Wow. So. Excellent. Matthew, great to see you again. Thank you for your time. Always a pleasure.